narrowly interpreting the title of our discussion, I have taken it to mean media in libraries, necessity or not. As you will shortly learn, I do not regard the media as a library necessity. On the other hand, I should not wish to see luxury banished from any libraries where it may fortunately exist, though I hasten to add that the media are not my idea of library luxury. Compliments are due to your program committee for their view that books don't have to be regarded as merely one of the media and that they possibly remain the essential concern of the library profession. I shall return to this point a little later. I have not the slightest doubt that a sizable portion of our audience this morning is of the firm opinion, which I myself once held, that the media are a necessity in libraries. And I hope that there are some in this gathering who hold the opposite view. It is important that we remember, however, that these views are opinions only, and that our ultimate right to them depends upon how much thought we have given to a number of fundamental questions which are beneath our topic. To list these questions is to come to a realization that the matter before us is not as simple as some would like us to believe. Here are a few for the list. What are libraries? What can and should they do? For whom? What are the media and what can and should they do? And for whom? Does technology advance with an irresistible force? Must institutions change in purpose? Whose answers to these questions shall be the accepted answers? Can the dynamics of translating them into decisions for action be controlled? By whom? How will leadership be established? What will be its role? What will be the role of the professional rank and file of interested industries, of government, of professional schools and associations? Who will speak for the library client? What about faith, evidence? experience. Is there to be permitted the exchange of argument with definitions and assumptions brought into question? In the perspective of history, the transformation of libraries into media centers has been recent and rapid. To study this transformation as a problem is to ask the question which have just been put before you, I am sure you are all as grateful as I that my alleged and allotted time permits only an introduction to the problem. Such introductions usually consist of observations which reveal the speaker's thesis, biases, and lines of reasoning. In an attempt to keep things li uh, lively, and with apologies in advance for any injured feelings, I shall speak in candor. When two or three decades ago, record recollections and film departments made their modest entry into libraries, critics were quick, si quickly silenced on the grounds that the primacy of the printed page wasn't really being threatened, I suspect that there were also assurances that the programs were only experimental. Moreover, only purists would pass up opportunities to reach a wider public, and here was a means to serve that portion of the public which could not read or preferred not to. Arnold Toynbee has an observation to offer regarding unwarranted undertakings of this kind when he writes, The presumption that because a faculty has proved equal to the accomplishment of a limited task within its proper field, it may therefore be counted upon to produce some inordinate effect in a different set of circumstances is never anything but an intellectual and a moral aberration and never leads to anything but certain disaster. American libraries for so many years, the admiration of the world for the liberality of their endowments, for the well-known skill with which they were organized and managed, and for the gratitude inspired in their readers undertook 
in the 1980s to extend their success to endeavors which until that decade they had left to others. Meeting needs is holding its own against networking as you have seen if you read your 1975 ALA ballot where these expressions have the ring of incantations. Of more than 100 candidates, the vast majority of whom are literally falling over one another, meeting needs and joining networks, some of them are meeting only expressed needs. But a couple of truly inspired office seekers promise to meet expressed and unexpressed needs. Heaven help us for a splendid essay on the subject of meeting needs. See Irving Crystal's article in last November 17th's New York Times magazine.